everything human beings do, write this down if you have notes, otherwise wait for the video, but take this to the bank. Everything human beings do is in response to a feeling. It's either a feeling they want more of or a feeling they want a whole lot less of. That's what it comes down to. Now, if you have a background in things like neurolinguistic programming, they'll say, well, no, no, some people are visual and some people are auditories and some people are, are, are uh, olfactories. And I actually met olfactory people. They're very weird. They smell everything. Um, but here's the bottom line. Every single process that they do, whether they start with a visual and end at a kinesthetic or they start an auditory, they end at a kinesthetic, everything ends in a kinesthetic. And that feeling is going to move people. This is your first concept. Towards and away from. What do they move towards? Pleasure, comfort, attraction. What do they move away from? Pain, uncertainty, discomfort, confusion. Okay? When we start thinking about body language and how to read people, the problem that we have, we, it's a fascinating study, and I've been doing this most of my life. One of the problems is there's too much information, right? Most people, I, I, if you're anything like me, you probably have six or seven books on body language sitting collecting dust on your shelves, and you've maybe looked at it once, right? And, so you're, and you're trying to memorize all the different variations that a person's body can take. You don't need to do that. You just need to understand the continuum of body language and a few basic principles, and if you have these heuristics or rules of thumb, you can look at any person or group of people, know who the rapport leader is, who's more into who, who's not having it, who's gonna lie to you, who isn't, or as I say, with a high probability of who's gonna lie to you or hold back. So let's talk about those principles, and then let's look at some of the fastest, easiest to learn things that we can put into practice right away to start reading people. Now, the best part about the technologies that we teach in Planet David, you don't got to believe any of it. These things are not belief dependent. All you got to do is do it, you'll get the result. Now, there's another side to this. All the things you're learning about in terms of how to read people has a, has a programming type component to it. One of the classes I teach is called the mating dance. The, five st the seven stages of uh, body language that people go through from complete stranger to what I like to call one plus one equals three. Extreme intimacy. There are seven discrete stages that they go through, five to seven discrete stages that they go through. These seven stages translate to pretty much any other application beyond dating. I have personal injury attorneys using it in voir dire, in jury selection, in depositions. I have uh, therapist uh, students of mine who are using it as part of their intake. And it all comes down to towards and away from, okay? So that's the first one I want you to get. People are either going to move towards something or they're going to move away from something. But what are the things that they actually um, do? Okay, so we're going to talk about the big picture, the rapport continuum. I'm going to need two volunteers for this. Can I use you two? All right. Here's how this works. Hopefully, the, come on up. All right. So. When we start looking at dynamic interactions between people, there's a few things I want you to get. First is called the center, the ventral line, the constructive center, okay? Your, your ventral line, if I draw a line from the top of my head straight down the center of my body, okay? That's your ventral line. If I draw a line from the top of my head right down the middle, that's my dorsal line. When they're standing back to back, this is anti-rapport. Dorsal lines facing each other, moving away from each other. These people are moving away from connection. Does that make sense? That's the outlier, the ends of the continuum. As people move through the lines of connection and chemistry and attraction, they start moving towards things. Several things are going to begin to change right away. First is going to be ventral orientation. Next thing is going to happen is proximity is going to shift. And you know what happens? More ventral orientation. More proximity. Until they're PP to PP. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 they're family. It's like, yeah, I can get away with it. But my, thank you guys. Give these guys a big round of applause. That's the first thing. Go ahead. Give them a round. It's not easy to get up here and deal with me. Damn it. Right? By the way, I should give you my disclaimer. 
if politically incorrect language, colorful metaphors, swearing, or the word boobies offends you, you should probably go hang out with somebody else, right? But this is something I want you, don't believe me, just watch, okay? You will see people moving through these phases as they move from stranger to intimacy, but you'll also see variations of this. You'll see vari um, uh, variations in the continuum, but if you don't know the continuum, you don't have a framework to extrapolate from. Does that make sense, right? Body language is not an exact science, but there are some shortcuts that you can apply to speed reading people. The first one is that whole idea of ventral orientation and proximity, okay? Now, you have the ventral line, then you have what we call the constructive center. Everybody take your fingers, touch it under your eyes like this. Now draw a line down the center of your body. That's called your constructive center. All of your organs, all of your vital organs fall in that space. That is the most sensitive, delicate, vulnerable part of your body. The more uncomfortable a person feels, the more they block access to it. The more comfortable a person feels, the more it opens up. Take it to the bank. Every other body language configuration that you will encounter in any book falls in that line. They're either blocking access to that ventral line and that, that constructive center, or they're opening it. Those are the extremes. You understand? Towards, away from. Towards pleasure, away from pain. Make sense? Okay. So ventral line, constructive center. The more you can draw, like if I'm working with this lady here, right? And we're talking. I'm very comfortable. She's very comfortable, right? She feels very safe with me. But let's say I make some lewd, nasty comment. First thing she's going to do is this. Or you'll see this. If I say something she likes, how do you all watch your favorite movie? You like this? Or like this? right? Towards, away from. Pleasure, pain. It's, it's all the same. Keep it simple. So when you're talking to somebody and all of a sudden they lean forward, you just said something they liked, something they want to hear more of. You see them lean back. You said something they either don't agree with or they find painful or uncomfortable in some way. If they lean back and do this, what just happened? Now they don't feel safe. You see, it's all the same, towards and away from. Do I give you more access or do I take it away? Do I set up impediments to this ventral line? Does that make sense? Don't believe me, just go out to the nearest singles bar or wherever people hang out, watch people talking. You'll see people at the bar. Can I, uh, can I use you real quick? Let's say we're, just, we're sidled up to the bar here, right? Okay, so if she's, put your arm up kind of like this. now. Can I easily access her central line? Who's, who's more comfortable right now, her or me? Exactly, why? She can just punch me right in the head, right? There's, there's nothing stopping her. But this, I, if I wanna get to her vital organs or to her face, I gotta go past that hand. You understand? People will always put either a body part or an object between them and the source of their discomfort. Now, let's talk about, thank you very much. Give her a big round of applause. Let's talk about lie detection for a minute. Remember, there is no single cue that indicates deception. There isn't. What you get are increasing indicators of stress, discomfort, negative neurological arousal. The more neurological, negative neurological arousal the body goes through, the more we start to self-soothe. These are, we're t are, we, are we opening ourselves up or closing ourselves up? You ever, you ever see anybody like just try to self-soothe themselves by going, we don't do that. We do this, we do this, we, we do this. Everything's covering our ventral line. You understand? When you start to see people shift from their normal way of behaving, and that's what gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna get into the principles of this now, but everything I'm gonna share with you fits within this frame of towards and away from, towards pleasure, away from pain. Does that make sense? Is it useful? Okay. 
When you're doing sales or when you're working with a client and all of a sudden you see that, that closing off of the ventral line, you know you just hit something that either needs, you need to install more safety, more comfort, more connection. So access to the ventral line. Proximity. Do they attempt to either close the distance between you or increase it? Blocking is a way of increasing distance. Another way you'll see it a lot of times is, especially if they're trying to be cool. Oh, that's all locked together. I guess I'm not going to play with that. All right, so I'll do this. So I'm sitting here, we're talking, and all of a sudden somebody says something that puts me on the spot or makes me feel uncomfortable. Maybe I'll be open up here, but you'll see, you have to look up, you have to stand up and look. You see this. See the legs move away? When you start reading body language, we're going to talk about face reading towards the end of the, of the training. Um, when you start seeing parts of their body move away, that's someone trying to, sh to, to, to negate the stress without showing you they're trying to negate the stress. Does that make sense? So blocking, moving away, again, towards pleasure, away from pain, away from discomfort. For my next trick, <sighs> pleasure, pain, we talk, all right, so we talked about comfort versus discomfort. If I'm comfortable, I'm going to chill, I'm going to take out. This is how you can tell, you can assess the level of dominance somebody tends to have. Dominant people usually feel comfortable in their own skin, and so they have no problem taking up space vertically and horizontally. In fact, if you want to be more confident and you want to be given more credibility, if you learn to physically take up more space, vertically and horizontally, people will give you more authority. Okay? Dominant versus subordinate. Dominant people are big and forward. What does that mean? Go over here and do this. Go do that, right? They're big, they're up. They're forward and up. Subordinate people, please don't hurt me. They're forward and down and small. They get small and forward. So you have the difference between this and this. So when you move through the world, you can assess, is somebody comfortable or uncomfortable? Are they being dominant or subordinate in relation to the person they're dealing with? They'll tend to make themselves smaller if they're in the subordinate role. Does that make sense? Okay. How are we doing on time? Five minutes? Damn. All right. Well, we don't have to, these are the principles that you can learn. So let me just um, do this really quick. These are some th this, is, this, is what, this is what we call active profiling. Okay? When you look at somebody's face, there are three key areas or three key traits that you can pay attention to that will, get, will let you assert comfortable versus uncomfortable and this, the, the probability that they might want to lie to you. The first is called blink rate. When you meet someone, the first thing you want to do is establish a baseline. What is their norm? You understand? Before you start injecting any input or any emotion, what do they do normally? Then you want to calculate deviance from the baseline. What do you want to look at? The first thing is you want to look at how fast, how many times in a one minute do they blink? How many times in one minute do they blink? If someone likes what you're saying, their blink rate will slow down. If someone likes you, their blink rate will slow down. If they don't like you, if they don't like what you're saying, if they're processing and analyzing what you're saying and thinking about what they're going to say next, their blink rate's going to speed up. But you don't know that until you know what they normally do. So you've got to get a baseline right off the bat. Does that make sense? What else can you look at? Shutter speed. What the hell does that mean? This is the number of times that they blink in a given minute. This is how fast they open and close their eyes. So are they doing this or this? The speed at which the eye opens and closes determines also towards and away from. If they're into what, if, they're, if they don't like what you're doing, they're uncomfortable or unattracted, the blink rate's gonna, they're gonna open and close their eyes faster. If they like what they're looking at, if they're focused, if they're engaged, slower. People go deep into trance, their blinking practically stops. Right? The last thing I want you to look at, and a lot of people know this, but this is one that you, again, if you don't know what, they, what their normal is, you can't calibrate deviation. Pupil dilation. Big pupil, they like you. The bigger the pupil, the more attractive they are. The only time that changes is when they're extremely terrified. So here's how you figure out which is which. 
If you see huge pupils, look under their chair. If there's a puddle, they're not attracted. Okay? The smaller the pupil, the more, the more constricted the pupil becomes, the more they are analyzing what you are saying and formulating a response, that's where deception can happen. Because now they're not an open book. Now they're not necessarily in super deep rapport. They're distancing themselves internally from everything that you're saying to figure out what to say next. I call it the pupil dance. You'll see as you go through these different stages of rapport and connection, the pupils will just oscillate. And you can zero in like a GPS on the on things that, that make them light up, the things that stress them out. So these are the things that, we, that will change in the moment, but you've got to have a baseline. Last thing I want to talk about, what if it were possible to actually look at somebody's face and know what emotions are, the, are giving them the most problems? I'm a, I have a doctorate in Chinese medicine. Part of what we learn is facial diagnosis. Whoops. You see someone with a line? Starts about halfway above the eyebrow, moving towards the outside. Extreme skeptic. You don't got to believe me. Okay. Someone with lines are coming here. We all know about the joy lines here. One of the things you want to pay very close attention to is if you people have people lines that descend down from the outer corner of the eye, if you're a therapist, pay really close attention to this. This is somebody who's stuffed down and experienced a lot of grief, sorrow, or just or, um, um, sadness. A lot of times they'll present with lung problems because that's where those emotions go. If you see a line that comes across and down the cheek, this is somebody who in the past has lost something that was such an intrinsic part of their identity that when that was gone, they, they, they lost a part of themselves. Part of your job, as a, like, we have a, a program called Golden Path, which is about finding your mission in this world and getting back on the spiritual mission you came into. A lot of times people will present with this when something that was part of their golden path has been taken away. Okay? Um, people who have um, these kind of lines here, usually very impatient. Or they spend a lot of time driving in LA, one of the two. Right? But uh, usually have irritation, annoyance, and impatience. Um, well, there's a, I, I mean, I could talk for hours on this. How much time do I have? Yes, sir. When you, if you see no expression up here, chances are they're a Botox baby, all right? But here's the thing. It will also blunt their emotional expression it, it will, and, it, and it toxifies the liver. This area is connected to the liver organ. I can diagnose your entire face by the lines, markings, and colorations of your face. That's just part of my training. But there's so much more to that. Personality and temper. I have three courses that I teach on this. And this is, what, well, this is one of the most immediately useful things. When you see people with lines, vertical lines around the lips, you're looking at someone who's got a lot of stuff down, a lot of bitterness, right? You see someone with these lines that come down, a lot of disappointment in their life, right? Um, these lines here, we call these disempowerment lines. You see this in a lot of abuse victims. And what happens in, in, in this situation is somebody encroached on their boundaries and they tried to fight back. They tried to push back. How many people here remember the old movie or the old television series, All in the Family? with Carol O'Connor. You remember Edith? It's okay, Archie, everything is gonna be fine. Right? That's Edith Bunker. What happens in this case is this person, their boundary was violated, they pushed back, and the person they were pushing back against pushed back so much harder that the person went from being protecting themselves to trying to just appease them to make it go away. So I call these appeasement lines. You will see this a lot of times in, your, in our therapy clients, okay? So the, when you look at people, you will start to see their emotional history written on their face. The Chinese say, um, when you're, when you're first born, you're never closer to your original face. By the time you hit your 50s, you got the face you deserve, right? But what's really cool, and this is where it gets really fucking woo-woo, pardon my French, is if you start to unpack the, the energy behind these lines, and you resolve it, the line goes away in seconds. My teacher, Lillian Bridges, who I, I, you know, she passed on a couple years ago, but I'm carrying on her lineage. She would say, um, well, so what she would do is at the end of the training, she would bring people in and we didn't know. We'd have to do face readings, right? And they would, she would take a before picture and an after picture. Then she would sign one of us to go do the face reading. And then they would take an after picture and as soon as everybody left, they'd put the pictures side by side and it was a different person. 
right? This first time I heard that, I called bullshit like you wouldn't believe, and then I saw it happen, right? I was I was doing a, a distance uh, hypnotherapy session with somebody one time, and we and she had been like dominated and, and repressed all her life, and she got her power back, and her whole freaking eyebrow went. Poof. You ever see that when the, the needle pops on a turkey baster? It was like one minute she was flat, the next minute she had Frankenbrow. It was incredible, right? And so we have lots of face readers. If you guys want a complimentary face reading, just talk to anybody with one of these cool shirts. Oh, I'm sorry. Richard is reminding me. You guys like this? Is this cool? All right. Would you like to learn more? How would you like to learn it for free? Would that be cool? All you got to do on your seats are little packets of mints. The mints are yours to keep. On the mint is a barcode. If you scan that barcode, you're going to be taken to a web page. If you sign your name and email, You'll be added to my special invitation list. Seven, within seven days after this event is over, you'll receive a personal invitation to a free four-hour speed reading people class. There is no charge. It's not a webinar. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through the fundamentals. We're going to break you up into Zoom rooms, and you're going to read each other, and you're going to practice, and you're going to get really good at it. Yes, sir? It's a virtual training, so you can do it from anywhere. But we do, we do, for those of you who want to do it live, in Dallas, in April, I have a three-day uh, introduction to face reading class and it's the classical system I was taught so um, we're filling up but if you guys are interested in getting it on that live and in person see Stephanie at my booth and she will get you on the guest list and tell you how to become involved that being said please scan the links put in your name and join me uh, in a couple of weeks for going deep dive was this fun was this useful if you liked it please tell everybody if not say you're at somebody else's event yes sir If somebody's what? I, I, can somebody repeat what he, I can't barely hear this gentleman. I would love to. Uh-huh. Oh, if they like their hand, their pupils are going to do that. If they don't like their hand, it's going to be this. Yeah, if they like, yeah, if they like their hand, their, their, their shutter speed will slow down. Right? Unless they're looking around. If they're nervous, then you'll see them speed up. But you got to calibrate it. But it, it's all towards and away from. It's all towards and away from. The moment you the moment you get the rapport continuum and you understand comfortable, uncomfortable, dominant, subordinate, towards and away from, it all starts to make sense, right? I'm Dr. David Snyder, DavidSnyderNLP.com. Good night. God bless. Oh, we have one more talk today. It's called How to Connect with Your Divine Self. It's at Empowering Speakers. What time is the the next talk? What's that? Three. It's on, the, it's on the schedule. Just go down and look. <laughs> I'll, I'll show up eventually. <laughs> Take care.